with the sermon titled, The Kingdom of Heaven, where we enter by faith, let us take some time to think about our faith that God has granted us. If we do not have faith, can we enter the kingdom of heaven? We can never enter there. While we are living in this world, in every single moment, and in every single situation, God always sees our faith, weighing it with tens of thousands of things. From time to time, God tests whether we have enough faith to enter the kingdom of heaven. We can find this in the life in the desert, in the time of Moses, 3,500 years ago. Now, we are also walking in the desert of faith, aren't we? The relationship between the physical desert and the desert of faith is that of shadow and reality. The Israelites experienced many different types of tests in the desert. Therefore, we can understand that God always tests us and weighs our faith to see what our faith is like, and that God will open the gate of heaven when we have complete faith to enter the kingdom of God. Today, let us study about faith through the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Let us take a look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 together. In chapter 11, verse 1, it says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Let us move on to verse 6. And without faith it is, how is it? Impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Regarding faith, what kind of faith should we have first? God exists. We should absolutely have faith in the existence of God. The Bible tells us that we must believe that God exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. When we do not have faith in the existence of God, we often submit to physical situations in the physical world that is visible to our naked eyes. Even though God promised us, saying, I will be with you to the end of the age, there were many times when we did not have faith in God, but submitted to physical situations and became discouraged. Thus, according to the teachings about faith, what does the Bible say that we should believe first? We must first believe in the fact that God exists and that God is always with us. Only then, the gospel can be spread to the whole world and be completed, right? We can see the cases of those who believe this, such as Noah in verse 7, Abraham in verse 8, and Sarah in verse 11. In the Bible, the history of many forefathers of faith is written continuously. In verse 24, there is also the record about Moses. Since all the forefathers of faith were absolutely certain that God exists, they were able to carry out the work of God against all odds. Recently, I visited the churches in South America. At that time, the situation there was unstable. Thus, when we had to go to another city, many members gathered and discussed about whether or not we could go there. In the end, one of them said, let us think about what we have gone through up until this day. He continued, 
At every moment when we said it is impossible, we cannot do it, God has helped our church. Did you forget how much God had helped us? This time too, if we go, God will surely open the way. It was the situation where those who demonstrated and protested against the government gathered and installed various obstacles to prevent other cars from moving. Thus, if we had moved, we could have been in danger. It was such a dangerous situation. However, whenever we proceeded with faith, God guided and led us smoothly to the path we should go, avoiding life-threatening situations like magic. Regardless of whether or not such situations occurred, God allowed us to complete all our schedules, such as worship services and united gatherings, and come back safely. The members warned us about these situations, not because they had no faith, but because they were concerned about our safety. However, just as God divided the Red Sea and made a way for the Israelites, He would never block the way, but open the way for us. After we, the visiting team, came back, the way was blocked. Seeing this, the members were even more moved and encouraged. They realized that this was undeniable proof that God was with us on every step of this visit to South America. While we are living in this world, there must be many times when we try to discern and judge everything based on what we see with our naked eyes not believing the fact that God is with us in every moment. We can confirm that the path of faith we are walking in the spiritual desert is really similar to the time in history when Moses tried to lead the Israelites through the desert to enter Canaan 3,500 years ago. Let us turn to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Let us take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1. In chapter 8, verse 1, it says, Be careful to follow every command I am giving you today, so that you may live and increase, and may enter and possess the land the Lord promised on oath to your ancestors. Remember how the Lord your God led you all the way in the wilderness these 40 years to humble and test you in order to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commands. During the 40-year journey in the desert, God created many situations and many environments in front of the Israelites. Whenever they were put in these situations and environments, they came to think that God did not exist. They faced the barren and desolate desert where there were no restaurants or food to eat. When God let them walk, in such desolate desert, the people began to grumble and complain as soon as they ran out of food. They said, what can we eat now? These were the words spoken by those who did not think that God exists at all. We can never find faith in people who say such words. Everyone, those who have faith are the ones who do not forget that God exists even in the most unfavorable circumstances. They can be called as people of faith. We are now in a position where the eternal kingdom of heaven is right before us. We must not repeat their mistakes by looking at the history of what occurred 3,500 years ago. What happened to them in the desert? They were all destroyed. 
They couldn't enter the land of Canaan, which they were destined for, but were destroyed. We can see such a pitiful scene through the Bible. The geographical distance was short, and 10 days was enough to arrive there. However, the spiritual distance of their faith was different. They had to walk for 40 years to get there. What caused this to happen? Their faith caused this to happen. This happened because the Israelites did not have enough faith to enter the land of Canaan. Before I show you this one by one through the Bible, in conclusion, due to their lack of faith, they needed 40 years for a short distance that could be reached in 10 days. How sad is this? Moreover, although they arrived after 40 years, their journey did not come to an end peacefully. Most of the first generation that came out of Egypt were destroyed. Only Joshua and Caleb were allowed to enter the land of Canaan. Behind this, faith was at work. Without faith, we cannot enter the kingdom of God. What does faith mean in Hebrews chapter 11? It is written that having faith in the fact that God exists is the most fundamental principle of faith. Believe that God exists. Since they did not believe this, they grumbled and complained in the desert because there was no food and no water. It is also written, sometimes God humbled you, and sometimes He put you in many difficult circumstances. God put them in many different circumstances and observed their faith in those circumstances. Today, too, there are many things like this in our daily life. Sometimes God creates circumstances in which we might obsess over the anxieties of life. At that moment, God observes our faith. He discerns thinking, do they believe in the existence of God or not? Let us continue with the book of Deuteronomy. Let us see verse 3. He humbled you. What else did he do? Causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothes did not wear out, and your feet did not swell during these 40 years. Know then in your heart, that as a man disciplines his son, so the Lord your God disciplines you. Observe the commands of the Lord your God, walking in obedience to him and revering him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with brooks, streams, and deep springs gushing out into the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil, and honey a land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing, a land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. While they were walking in the desert, God humbled them by causing them to hunger and then feeding them with manna to satisfy their hunger. God created many kinds of environments and situations. What was the reason? What does the Bible say the reason was according to verse 2? It is written, to test you. What did God test? It is written that God tested them in order to know what was in their heart. In other words, God wanted to know what kind of faith they had, whether or not they would keep His commands. In some cases, they obeyed God's word. But when they were put at a disadvantage or in an inconvenient situation, they no longer obeyed God's word. In one kind of environment, they followed God. But in another kind of environment, they did not follow God. Everyone, that is not faith. 
God teaches us through the book of Hebrews that those who believe that God surely exists are those who have true faith. Thus, when we take a close look at the history of the Israelites, we can understand that they could not enter Canaan because of their lack of faith. When we think about this one by one, it is true that they were not allowed to enter the land of Canaan because they grumbled, complained, and were frustrated. When we summarize the reason, it is because of their lack of faith. Why did the Israelites demonstrate all this behavior? Wasn't it because they did not have faith? We are now living in the age when the spiritual Canaan, the kingdom of heaven, is drawing near. All the prophecies of God are now being fulfilled in our lifetime. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. All kinds of pestilences will spread. There will be great earthquakes and famines in various places. Since Korea is the cradle of the gospel that must preach the gospel to the whole world, I feel that God protects Korea in so many ways. However, when we take a look at other countries, we can see that the world has become a global environment where inflation rises drastically due to the war between Russia and Ukraine. In the past, we were able to buy goods with one dollar, but now we cannot buy the same goods even with two dollars. Now, we must keep our faith in God in any situation, no matter where God puts us whether we are in the desert or in the green pasture, shouldn't we believe that God exists and walk with Him on the joyful path to the kingdom of heaven? Therefore, regardless of the circumstance we are placed in, only those who have firm and unwavering faith that is built on the rock can enter Canaan, the kingdom of heaven. Right? God tests our faith. God humbled you and tested you. He caused you to hunger and then fed you with manna, which your ancestors had not known. Your clothes did not wear out and your feet did not swell during these 40 years. God created all these environments so that they could live without having to change their shoes or clothes during 40 years. When they first came out of Egypt and entered the desert, the distance to Canaan was a 10-day journey. Therefore, they prepared food for about a month. It was a distance that could be reached in 10 days. But they prepared enough food for a month thinking that it might take a little longer. Even though they ate all the food, they could not reach Canaan. However, God provided everything for them so that they wouldn't lack anything. Everyone, just like their journey in the desert 3,500 years ago, there might be many members who are anxious about their lives while they are walking in the desert of faith now. It is not only the anxieties of life. Even in our life of faith, there are many situations that cause our faith to be shaken. I ask all the Zion family members to never forget God and never lose the kingdom of heaven, even under such circumstances. What do father and mother tell us to prepare through Matthew chapter 25? Don't they tell us to prepare oil? In the Bible, oil represents faith. In this age, without faith, we cannot go to the kingdom of heaven. First, above all things, we must believe that God exists. When people do not believe that God exists, 
They cannot help but choose a foolish path. They are led into evil ways. Sometimes they are tempted, and they easily give up their faith. When they stand before God's judgment seat on the last day, they will all be in despair. Why didn't I believe this? Even though the Bible, which is the only record of the truth, is the true word of God, why didn't I believe in the existence of God and of the eternal kingdom of heaven and hell? Why did I make such a foolish decision? They will have regrets in the end. We need to have faith. In order for our lamp to carry out its role correctly, we must not only keep our lamp of being Christians, but fill it with faith. To live properly as Christians, God's people, and Elohis, above all things, the most essential thing we need is to have faith. Let us turn to Matthew chapter 25, verse 1. In chapter 25, verse 1, it says, At that time the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take. What did they not take? Any oil with them. Although they had the title, those who believe in God, they did not fill that title with faith. Therefore, the Bible likens them to those who have their lamps, but no oil. Would the lamps be of any use? They become useless and have no role to play if there is no oil. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not take any oil with them. Verse 4, the wise ones, however, took, what did they prepare? Oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, Go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. God himself gave this parable in the book of Matthew chapter 25 when he came to this earth in the flesh. Why did he give us this parable? On that day, when Christ comes to take us, of course we will need the lamp. What else will we need in order to wisely receive Christ? It is the oil that makes the lamp function properly. Therefore, if there is something that makes us true Christians, we can say it is our faith. Let us turn to Hebrews chapter 3. Let us see verse 14. In chapter 3, verse 14, it says, We have come to share in Christ if indeed we hold our original conviction firmly to the very end. As has just been said, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion. Who were they who heard and rebelled? Were they not all those Moses led out of Egypt? And with whom was he angry for 40 years? Was it not with those who sinned, whose bodies perished in the wilderness? And to whom did God swear that they would never enter his rest? To put it simply, they would never enter his rest means that they would never enter the kingdom of heaven. To whom did God swear that they would never enter his rest, if not to those who disobeyed? So we see that they, what did they do? God connected this, saying, those who disobeyed are those who did not believe. 
if not to those who disobeyed, so we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. Faith is obedience, and obedience is an expression and an attitude of faith that only those who are convinced that God exists can have. We know well the deeds of people such as Noah and Abraham, don't we? They were tested to the point where they could wonder, can I, a mere human, really carry this out? However, what did they do? Since they believed that God surely exists, Abraham offered his only son Isaac as a sacrifice on Mount Moriah. And Noah believed that the world would be destroyed with water. When we look at the history of Noah, Abraham, Moses, and all the forefathers of faith, we think lightly about their work and say, if I had lived in the time of Abraham, I would have done like Abraham. Or, if I had lived in the time of Noah, I would have done like Noah. However, it is not true. We would not have. It is never possible to do such deeds easily in those environments or situations. Please think about Peter who was Jesus' leading disciple. In a peaceful environment with Jesus, he said, I will follow you even if I die. If you go to prison, I will go with you even to prison. If I had to die for you, I could even die for you. Peter had such faith. However, the environment and situation around him changed. After the Passover supper, when Jesus was in Gethsemane, the high priest's servants came and arrested Jesus. He was tried in the house of the high priest. Since Peter had good faith, he secretly followed Jesus. He wondered what will happen and wanted to see the end result. When a servant girl of the house said, this man was just in the same crowd with Jesus, what did Peter say? Although it was momentary, he said, I do not know him. A little later, someone else asserted the same thing again. Once again, Peter shook his head and he said, I never knew him. Everyone, if we do not strengthen our faith, our faith can have differences in times of peace and in such situations when something happens. Didn't Jesus already prophesy that Peter would disown him three times? He said, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. However, Jesus knew that this happened, not because Peter had no faith, but because he could not escape the situation that was happening at that moment. That is why Jesus even gave Peter the opportunity to repent three times. He asked him three times, Do you love me? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Lord, you know well that I love you. Circumstances can be given to us at any time to test our faith or expose our faith. Through many situations and under the constant cycle of temptation, we always come to stand on the scales of God. Whenever this happens, the Bible says that those who do not have enough oil of faith are foolish. This is because their faith is swayed by that situation. Since those who have faith have built their house of faith firmly on the rock, they are never shaken or waver even when streams arise. These are the people who absolutely believe that God always exists. They believe that God surely exists. We can say that they are like the five wise virgins who have prepared enough oil of faith. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse 18, it is written that God even swore. What did he swear? 
he swore that they would not enter his rest, that is, the kingdom of heaven. What kind of people are those who God swore would not enter? They are those who disobeyed. Then why did they disobey? Their disobedience came from their lack of faith. If not those who disobeyed, verse 19, so we see that they were not able to enter because of their unbelief. It is written, those who disobeyed cannot enter. And it is also written, those who do not believe cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. If we take a close look at these two verses, we can see that obedience comes from faith. And that without faith, we can never enter the heavenly Canaan. Who said this? God. What did God even do? He even swore and said that such people cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. If we are walking the right path in the eyes of God, He will save us from every critical situation, just as He did to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Even though we are thrown into the lion's den, like Daniel, our God can save us from such situations. However, God has put us in a more peaceful environment for now. If this situation continues, we might be able to keep our faith until the end. However, if we are placed in a different situation or are faced with a more difficult situation, then our faith will be revealed before God. For this reason, God showed us in advance the example of Abraham, the example of Noah, and the example of Joshua. It is never too much to say that all 66 books of the Bible serve as a guide to show us what true faith is. Everyone, God surely exists, asking that we store up faith in the existence of God and hoping that we all will enjoy the glory and grace of returning to the kingdom of heaven together. I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.